Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy, and I am here to do the bonus reading for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Um, this is just a little thank you for your loyalty, your views, your likes, your shares, your comments for the last year. So, I've been giving everybody, so far, a bonus reading of some sort, and so Spirit told me to use the Archangel Power Tarot for you guys. All right, and this is by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. So we are going to get <sighs> five positions and see what it is the Spirit has to say. Four. Scorpio. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. For the time period between now and whenever, the end of Jan January probably, this is just a little bonus general and love reading. So whichever one comes out. Mm -hmm. All right. So first two cards we have for you here are three of Michael. This talks about releasing your past. You will grow from this situation. Time heals all wounds. I say. The card that fell with this is two of Michael. It will all be better if you just make a decision. You're overanalyzing. Find a compromise. So there's something going on in your life. All right. That is keeping you stuck. You can't make a decision. But the answer to that is to release the past and know that you will grow from the situation. The time will heal these wounds. Okay, stop overanalyzing it. Find a compromise. Hmm. Okay. So this is three of Michael. This is what's going on outside of you. Okay, around you. And this is what you're concerned with, the decision, making a decision. So perhaps you ended a relationship that was very hurtful and you're having a hard time making the decision whether or not to walk away from this. Alrighty. So we have the next card is number one, the magician, Archangel Raziel. All right. You can manifest the life you want. What you need will magically appear. Successful beginnings. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have the power in your hand to change the situation, to get out of this indecision, all right? All you got to do is make up your mind and go for it, okay? You have everything that you need in order to be successful. And the next two cards that fell are, oh, number seven, the chariot. So, determination and self-control, all right? Career advancement, acknowledging Acknowledgement of success by others. So perhaps the people around you see the situation that you're in and they're concerned about how you're handling it, but you are going to handle it victoriously and you are going to be successful. So if this has to do with your job, this could be telling you that you need to Walk away from an uh, old job, all right? Maybe you're going to get a promotion or maybe you're um, putting in for another company, another job, all right? Um, the acknowledgement of success by others. It could be that you got good re uh, references from friends, okay? Because you, were, you, you, you maintained your control, all right? And you made a decision. 
and you put in the work. And the six of Raphael, new friends, embrace your inner child. New friends or rekindle friendships. So maybe this is saying that this situation that you're in, when you go to this new position, this new job, you are going to make new friends. That's probably what this is. All right, very nice. So, something that you are trying to make a decision about, but you're being told that you have the tools to be victorious and you're going to like it where you end up because you're going to run into people that you know. Okay, yeah, all right, so that could be it. Maybe you don't even know that you know people who work at this place. Now, if this is about love, hmm. All right, so this, again, some hurtful situation that you are pining over whether or not that you need to leave this or you're just having a hard time letting go of the memories of it, all right? You keep going over it over and over in your mind, trying to understand it. But they're telling you that you just need to release it, okay? That you can manifest something, a new beginning. If this is in the relationship you want, it'll be a successful beginning, all right? The chariot here then would talk about moving on, right? Exhibiting some self-control and moving away from this, these bad memories. And this situation that had you all up in your head, all right? You needed to make a decision. You needed to make a decision. When you made the decision, you decided that you were going to take, thing, take matters into your own hands and make things happen for yourself. And you are successful. And you could be rekindling a previous relationship with someone else, right? New friends, it could be a new relationship. It could be rekindling another relationship, but not this one that had you all up in your head. That's over, all right? That's over. That was learning uh, a lesson. All right. Teachable moment. That relationship was a teachable moment, even if it lasted a long time. Right. That's what that is. So. You have two major arcanas here. The magician and the chariot. Seven and one. Seven and one is eight. So eight is divinity. OK, so this is something that. I think we're saying that the, the divine gave you the impotence, all right? They, you, they reminded you of who you were so that you could come up out of this situation that was just not getting any better because you weren't making a decision. All right, let's see if we can get some clarification on the situation for you here. So, so Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. The time period between now and the end of January 2019. Justice. So, whatever the situation was, you are getting justice. So, something that you released. Three of Swords, right? Because Michael is air, air is swords. So release in the past, covered by justice. Okay, so maybe this is a divorce. All right, this is a divorce. If it's work, it could be that you separated from the company. Mm -hmm. That you got a settlement from the company. Oh, that could be it. 
But if this is a love relationship, this may have been a divorce. Mm. Okay. Judgment. Justice and judgment. Wow. And judgment would have been for the two of Michael. So again, going over in your head over and over and over about this. Okay, you have to make up your mind and make a decision. Uh -huh. Justice comes when you make a decision, when you use your judgment. Uh, and it's going to be a new start, right? Something new. Something's going to change. The next card we have here is the Knight of Wands. All right, so this could be a fire sign coming with a passionate offer or message for you. Oh, and Page of Cups. And that is a water sign. Could be Pisces. Could be Cancer, Scorpio, Scorpio U, the chariot. Okay, so... This fell on top of the chariot, page of cups. So you're going, you're determined to offer someone or someone is determined to offer you love. Could be this fire sign here. This fire sign could also be the magician. All right. This is a successful new beginning. An offer of a new passion and an offer of love that's coming to you. There's a lot of movement here. So there's some something that's coming to you soon and quickly. It may surprise you. Mm. All right, let's get some more cards. That was too many. That was too many. Six of Raphael. Let's get... Clarification for Sister Raphael. Uh -huh. mm. Okay. So we have the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups could be a water sign from the past. Someone that you grew up with in your childhood or someone that you've known since you were young. Someone who gives, makes you feel happy. This could be someone you were with a long time. Someone who you were with a long time. Someone who you loved a long time. Or someone who loved you a long time. Or maybe a long time ago. And this person is coming back into your life. And they're going to make you feel young again. They're going to let you embrace your inner child. So we have water here and we have fire. And we have air. So it could be a Libra that you're dealing with. Could be a Pisces. Could be. Hmm. Could be Cancer, or Scorpio, and it could be any fire sign: Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. But it could be an Aries, Aries or Libra. Oh, so somebody could have that in their chart. But you are Scorpio, so this probably is you making an offer to someone. The Queen of Cups, someone that you've known a long time. Mm. Okay, so once you get over this, whatever this is, all right, so we got a Queen of Swords that fell out with the Three of Swords. So, this is someone who is not happy, I think, you know, someone who's going to speak up and be clear about a heartache. They're either going to be clear about it or they are going to get, they're either going to get some clarity about it or they're going to 
talk about it. Mm-hmm. They're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. This could be a problem between the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups. Because Spirit told me to put the, those cards on top of the Six of Raphael next to the Queen of Cups. And if I do that, then I get the Queen of Swords, Queen the uh, Three of Swords, and Queen of Cups. So this is like a standoff. Something that's being handled childishly. A disagreement. Could be a three-party situation because we have the Page of Wands here and the Page of Cups here. And this Page of Cups huh, may be offering love to two different people. And this Knight of Wands may be offering passion to these two queens. And this Queen of Swords wants justice. And so does this Queen of Cups. She wants clarity. She wants honesty. She wants things to start all over again. She wants to clean the slate. She wants a new beginning. She wants to start all over again. She wants to put these things in the past. She wants to find a compromise. Okay, she's the Queen of Cups wants a compromise. The Queen of Swords is looking for justice to heal the wounds that she has from the past. So she thinks that by broadcasting or talking about this heartache, it's going to bring her justice. And the Queen of Cups feels that the Queen of Cups is in, has been overanalyzing and overthinking this. She's been going over and over around the head. She wants to find a compromise. She wants things to be uh, clear. She wants things to be start all over. All right. Everybody speak their truths, take their punishment or whatever. And then let's move on to the next phase. Right, 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 right. So there is some love. <laughs> mm. A three-party love situation. For some of you, Scorpio. <clears throat> So some page or some knight has created some distasteful situation between this Queen of Swords and this Queen of Cups. And this Hierophant has been dying to come out. <laughs> so the Hierophant, and then we have the Ace of Sword, the Ace of Cups, I'm sorry. And then we have the Nine of Wands and the world and the ten of wands. So the Hierophant and the Ace of Cups. Okay, so all right, so this could be talking about someone maybe getting married or engaged. Somebody may be committed. Somebody may love what they do, love where they are. If this is about work, maybe you love your new job at the new organization. You're enjoying that. Okay, so this could be a marriage versus love. That's what they said. So the Justice and the Hierophant on the side of the Queen of Wands and Judgment and the Ace of Cups 
on the side of the Queen of Wands. Oh. Okay, we got a little competition going on here, right? And we have Nine of Wands. Someone's trying to protect themselves. All right. The world. And the Ten of Wands. So someone is trying to start a new chapter. They want to start something new. All right. Someone is trying to start a new chapter. They want to protect themselves. And they want to put down these burdens. And it could be this Nine of Wands. Okay. And he or she or you, <laughs> someone around you, is going to manifest the life that they want. They're coming at this passionately, but they're being careful. They're keeping their guard up, but they are trying to start a new chapter in their lives. They want to put down the burden. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know what this spread is called. I'm just going with what they're telling me to do, folks. <laughs> Where they tell me to lay the cards and how to bring them out. All right. So we have Ace of Pentacles. So this is a chance for new abundance. Mm -hmm. And that is supposed to go with the page of wands. So this page of wands is offering love and a new beginning, a new start. Oof, it was in the upright. That was just me. Page of wands and the... Ace of Pentacles on the chariot. So someone is determined to come forward with an offer of love and abundance. Okay. All right. They're very determined. Again, if this is about your job, you're going to enjoy your job and you're going to be successful. You're making lots of money. This is about love. Someone is getting a divorce or breaking up. It's a divorce because this seems to be a marriage. The Hierophant and the Justice together is a marriage. There was a third party relationship with this Knight of Wands coming between these, the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups. Well, not coming between them, but you know, like he's the centerpiece. Mm hmm. And the Ace of Cups is love. Because this is also about time, I think. That's the way I'm seeing it. Like someone is just waiting for divine timing to drop this manna, this nourishment into this cup that is already overflowing so somebody has a lot of love this queen of cups has a lot of love and she's just waiting for someone to come and add something to it because the love that she has is overflowing and it can't be contained and she can't get any peace until somebody makes a decision so she could be waiting for a decision or maybe or maybe she is waiting for this judge, the justice system to make a decision. So she could be waiting on these people to get a divorce. So this could be male, female. This could be male, male, female, female. You know, you can make it fit. But someone is waiting for someone to get a divorce so that they can express their love. They're waiting on a judgment. about a divorce
and someone else, this Knight of Wands, is trying to keep his guard up. He's protecting himself. But this is a new chapter for him, a new world for him. And he is going to be able to put down his burdens. Oh. Okay. But he's the magician in this. So he's the one who's creating the situation. And then he's standing back, protecting himself while these two women go at it. Or these two people go at it. But he is offering love and abundance. It could also be saying that he is offering to make peace, to apologize to the Queen of Swords and offer her some money in the settlement to bring peace so that he can get on his way. And move on. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know how that, why that came like that. Let's see. Okay. So, give me a second, please. One moment. Okay, sorry about that, folks. So, if this is you, Scorpio, water sign, then you may be having some kind of a challenge with a third party. Okay, maybe you are involved in a third party. And I'm saying you because the Queen of Cups is a water sign and Scorpio is a water sign. This doesn't necessarily have to be you, but if it is, okay. But there's a lot of love here, all right? And there will be a favorable judgment. So if you're waiting for someone to get divorced, they are, that's definitely their intention. And they are going to, I'll say, okay, I got a, a ding on my <laughs> iPad. Um, yeah, they're going to put down this burden and start something new, a whole new chapter with you after they put down these this heavy load that they've been carrying and the heavy load could be the way that they see their relationship with the queen of swords. Okay. That could be what's happening for some of you, whoever this is resonating with. Remember these are general readings. All right. And you can also check your sun, moon, and I'm sorry, check your rising sign, your Venus sign and your moon sign for further clarification. All right. Let's, well, I really don't want to do the romance angels. Oh, do I? Huh. Huh. Mm -mm. All right, let's try the tarot sexual magic, which is what I wanted to get out for you guys in the first place. But I was led to start with the tarot. Okay, so we have, oh, see, yeah, the lovers. So this could be talking about a third-party relationship, but when it fell, it fell in the reverse. So I'm thinking that this third-party relationship has come to a close, right? It's over. So that is good news for somebody. <laughs> third-party relationship. And that's the three of hearts, three of, three of hearts, three of swords, third party relationship in the reverse. So that's over. Okay. Okay. And we have six of chalices. All right. So this is someone, six of cups. This is someone who is looking at or maybe remembering the past 
remembering the past. She's hurt. She's sad. So I think that this is clarifying the Queen of Swords. Because she has the scroll on her lap and she's looking all sad. So I'm thinking that this is someone who has a contract, who has papers. And she's reminiscing and thinking about what, what went wrong, what spoiled, mm -hmm. what spoiled this situation. I mean, she could be looking in a magic mirror and seeing her loved one cheating, but I don't think it's, I mean, it could be, but I don't think it's that. I think that it's just thinking about what's going on. Okay. And here we have the three of pentacles. Hmm. Okay. So this is someone who is. This may be a relationship that has something to do with the workplace. Maybe two people to work together. All right. Two people who work together, who've fallen in love. Hmm. And I think this is saying that the male energy is protecting the feminine energy. He's carrying her. And he's lifting her up. I was I got that song Love will Lift Us Up Where We Belong. These people will look this is a third party relationship that's over. And it could have been two people who work together. Mm. And we have the strength card. So this is a Sagittarius or Leo, maybe, that are involved in this. I'm not answering that. I don't even know who it is. I don't even know where the phone is. So this is a strength card. So this could be someone who is a Leo, Sagittarius. It could be an Aries too, any fire sign, I guess. But strength is usually Leo. And this is someone who is taming the beast. Taming the beast. Hmm. Someone who is trying to be strong and be in control. Control themselves, control someone else. Hmm. Okay. Someone who is trying to control someone else. Or someone who has been in control. Or trying to gain control of someone else. And this could have some this could have something to do with this because he is holding her up carrying her he is in golfing her engulfing her so maybe that's him trying to be control be controlling or it could just be saying that Someone is trying to be strong here. Someone's trying to be strong. So again, this could be a, a tug of war. Also, between these two, these three people. And again, we have a Leo, a fire sign. So that could be the person who is the Knight of Wands. So it could be a fire sign, air sign, and a water sign. 
And Earth said, let me stay out of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Earth said, uh-uh, do not put me in this. All right. And we have the Four of Cups. Four of Cups. So someone is planning, making plans secretly. Whether to leave through the gate. Because there's some kind of there's some kind of magnetic attraction there, and there's money there, but there those scissors are there too. So you could be cutting ties. You could be cutting ties. Because of money and attraction. So the choices are leave or cut your ties with the person that you are attracted to at work. <laughs> that was your choice. That was, Those were your options. Leave or cut your ties with the person that you're attracted to at work. That's what was said. Those were the options. Those were the two options that were given to this Knight of Wands. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess he decided that he was going to cut his ties. No, that he was going to walk out the gate, actually. Maybe. Oh, and King of Pentacles here. He's going after somebody that is trying to stay away from him. He's going towards someone who doesn't want him to come for her. She's trying to hide from him. Hold on one moment. So, yeah, so this King of Pentacles is trying to get somebody not to leave, and she's trying to avoid him. She's repelling him she doesn't want what he's offering so again that could be the queen of swords she's not trying to entertain him okay and we have the hung man Okay, but this was in the reverse. So, someone was taking, was thinking about this, and someone else was trying to talk to them while they were trying to make up their mind, influence them. But now they've made a mind, up their mind. All right, they know what they're going to do. So this could have been this uh, person here that was trying to avoid this King of Pentacles. And then after she thought about it for a while and maybe got some uh, influence from someone, all right, or some messages, someone maybe coming towards her, someone else that she wasn't expecting. Now she has come to a decision where she's going to stand up. 
she's going to stand up. So maybe the person that was the Queen of Swords trying to get away from this King of Pentacles and maybe she got some friends who talked some sense into her or talked to her. Maybe she had a good friend who was interested in her that she wasn't paying attention to because she was so engrossed in this situation. And now she has come out of that and she's standing up for herself. All right. And we have Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords. Someone who feels that they've been hurt and they've wasted their time. And they want to cut all ties. They wasted their, they feel like they've wasted their love. They feel hurt. But this was in the reverse. So this is coming out of that feeling of feeling hurt and rejected and cheated on. Mm -hmm. So someone is coming out of feeling like they have been backstabbed. Someone has come out of that feeling. Letting those hurts fall away. Okay, and we have Ooh, Knave of Wands. So, Knave of Wands is a page of wands. Right? Knave is a knight? Yeah. Yeah. Because it has knights? Ah. Knave of Wands. Whatever. Fire sign again. Mm. This is someone who is like in hot pursuit, someone who is taking a chance, doesn't care. They want to be all out in the open. They want to, they, they're passionate. They can't keep their hands off of each other. That's what I'm getting here. And they want this to be, they want this to be. They want to be open with their, their relationship. So I think that this is the other party, the Queen of Cups side, with this Knight of Wands, who has, doesn't give a damn, doesn't care. They want to show the world their love, their passion for one another. And they are comfortable doing it. Mm. This is something that has been going on for a while, though. Because there's a lot of green back here. There's a lot of growth. There's a lot of... They're comfortable with one another, these people. Mm. Mm. Oh, boy. Five of chalices. Five of cups. So someone is coming with an offer. But they are this looks like like a a grave, like a, a mausoleum type thing, like a tomb. So this is a love that's on its way, I think, to being dead because of things that went on in the past between these two people. Five of Cups. Hmm. But this is in the reverse. So whatever the offer is to reconcile, mm -hmm. too much has gone on, too much hurt, too much things from the past. 
And that's not going to happen. They're not going to try to reconcile. Uh -huh. All right. And let's see. So someone was given an ultimatum. You either stay or you go. But if you stay, you got to cut your ties with this person that you're attracted to from work. And they were like, no, I think I'll keep moving. Uh -huh. Again, you got justice. Hmm. Says Libra. This truth and justice. Hmm. And we have the Seven of Swords. So this is someone, a couple, who have hurt one another, who have been hurt. They don't know what to say to each other. They turn their backs on each other. <sighs> and the feminine, the female, is not interested in what's going on with the male. He has been, he's tired. He's been begging. He's been on his knees. She's been hurt. There may have been some, hmm, a miscarriage, a loss of a child, some illness maybe the female was experiencing. She was keeping her eyes on what she had on her possessions, on the things that she loved, her family, her legacies. And this guy, he doesn't have anything else to say. He doesn't know what to say. He doesn't know what to do. And they basically stopped speaking to one another. They've turned their backs on one another. Hmm. And these are swords, both of these. Oops. Yes, justice. Okay. Swords. So these are two people who have stopped talking to each other. They've turned their backs on each other. They have nothing else to say. And they're going... For justice, they're going for a divorce. So if that's some, if that resonates with you, then that's then you know that that's what's going on. Hmm. And here we got ten of wands. So happiness, passion, fulfillment, being able to rely on one another. End of a burden. This is a happy thing. All right? This is like the happily ever after at the end. So someone is getting separated or divorced around you or you or someone that you are involved with. Maybe someone that you're waiting on. But it seems like at the end of the day, you all are going to... One couple, one, one of the couple, the couple that is... Not married is going to get together, and the couple that is married is going to uh, get a divorce split up. So if you're a third party relationship, if you're the uh, third party outside of the marriage, then I guess this is good news for you. If you're a third party and you are the person who wasn't cheating, then maybe it's good news too. Maybe <laughs> maybe you want a divorce also because you obviously can't trust this person, right? Okay, so I'm going to try to see if I can get something from the... Oh, <laughs> romance angel, soulmate. <laughs> yes, this is your soulmate. So 
This is a soulmate relationship. This is something that is meant to be. All these things that happened in divine timing, Scorpio, whoever it is around you who this is pertaining to. Okay. This is your soulmate. Let's see, can we get any other messages for Scorpio? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And this is their bonus reading. For the time period between now and the end of January 2019, mm, this could be the one. All righty. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. So it's confirming. This is your soulmate. This could be the one for you. You know that, though. And it seems like you all have been through a lot, but it also seems like you're going to be going through a lot more together, but it's going to be passionate and loving. And but pay attention to the red flags, right? The signs are cautioning you because, as they say, once a cheat, always a cheater. So you might have to pay attention to that about your partner. But not necessarily. It could be other things, okay? It could be other things, but pay attention to that too. And keep an open mind. Your soul may be different from your usual type and expectations. All right, so this is going to be something that you haven't experienced before, this relationship with this person. This is not going to be a walk in the park <laughs> for whoever this is resonating with. This is not going to be easy. All right? But it's worth waiting for. I say. So keep an open mind and pay attention to the red flags. But know that all that you've gone through, all that has been going on with the two of you, bottom of the deck, you deserve love. You are lovable. And this is worth waiting for. So whatever the situation is or was, if you are on the side of uh, getting the victory, you're getting it pretty soon, and it's going to be abundant, all right? But it's not going to be easy even after you all are together because this person may have some qualities that you're just going to have to get used to, and they may have some habits that you need to pay attention to. Also, it could be saying you need to pay attention to your own um idiosyncrasies <laughs> all right and don't don't be close-minded all right don't expect everybody's going to act like you are used to them this is a different relationship with a different person somebody that you're not somebody likes nobody that you've ever dated before even though you know you know what we say but he this person he or she is different and they're going to be see i got another day and they're going to give you, I'm getting a run for your money, and you're going to have to constantly be thinking, which could be exciting for you. Maybe you like that. But at any rate, it is worth waiting for. Ashe, very nice. So let me get one card, well, hopefully one, from the numerology guidance book deck by Michelle Buchanan and let's see what we have for Scorpio Sun Moon Rising and Venus oh number 66 healing so this situation that's worth waiting for is going to bring healing to you mm. And personal growth for all parties involved, I'm hearing. Number seven is personal growth and healing for everybody involved in this situation. And number 37, time out. All right, so let's see what time out is talking about. Hmm. This card indicates a need to take a little time out from your busy schedule and the hustle and bustle of life. 
Perhaps you've been working too much or you've got a lot going on. <laughs> Maybe you're just being tired, irritable, anxious, or just feeling unwell, generally. You've been under stress of any kind or have been spending time in negative or toxic environments. You must remove yourself from the situation to heal and recharge. So this may be why. Um, this may be explaining what went on with the uh, fire sign here. Possible Leo. That they were in a toxic relationship or a toxic situation. Could be the same for the Queen of Swords. The air sign. It could have been Libra. Uh, Gemini. Aquarius. Or could even be the water sign. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Mm. Time out. This is a perfect time to take a vacation. Even a day or two away will revitalize and recharge your soul. You don't even need to leave your home. You could just lay around the house and unplug your computer and your phone. Have an energy healing massage or facial, soak in a hot tub, take a walk outside in nature, watch a movie, read a good book, just find ways to unwind and center yourself and feel a sense of renewal. So if this has been going on for a long time, all right, um, you need to take some time out for yourself any of the players in this scenario you need to take out some time for yourself give yourself a goddess day or a god day all right get your nails done your hair done get a massage could be all three could be one of them <laughs> and see what the lessons are in this situation and give yourself a chance to heal this whole situation was for your all three people involved or how many people there are involved for your personal growth okay but you need to do something to take a rest you've been through a lot both three of you have been through a lot and you need to rest take a time out and give yourself pamper yourself pamper one another those of you who are still involved in a relationship Pamper one another. What was I going to do? I got numerology. All right. Wisdom of the Oracle. All right. Let's get a Wisdom of the Oracle. And this is by Colette Baron Reed. Mm, okay. And I got to get off of here because I have a client that I'm going to be doing a reading for. And she is waiting. No problem. All right. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number 30. TikTok. So this is divine timing. This is a gift from the divine. And that could be for all parties this whole situation could be a gift even if it doesn't feel like that just like it just now for some of you right now it might not feel like that but this is what it is okay when humans are when humans created time everything changed and contracted people have come to look at life in a linear way imagining that the past is behind them and the future is ahead of them but what if this isn't true at all? What if everything, creativity, beauty, chaos, and order were happening now in a glorious timelessness? You have all the time in the world to co-create the life you desire. So release your agenda. Let go of your need to shape every, mom every moment to your expectations, knowing that what is yours will never be withheld from you. Miracles are here right now, and they always show up when you need them right on time. Love, the fulfillment of a desire, 
And even the body's reproductive cycles have their own timetable. Some things are preordained and cannot be coerced. And everything has its season. It's divine and appropriate timing, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. Remember that you always have enough time for love, to find it or nurture it, to give it and to receive it. This clock is eternal and ticks according to the beating of your heart in perfect rhythm. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know? That love is always right on time. Love is always right on, right on time. Stay positive and make a commitment to remain in high vibration with your thoughts and feelings. All right? Well, TikTok. And this is 30, which is a three. All right? So that's about communications. But again, it's about three-party. Right now, I'm hearing this. Three, it's about this three-party relationship that everything is being done in divine timing. This is all ordained, all right? These people are soulmates, and you just have to keep an open mind about the situation. Don't feel, um, if you're the person who's outside now, don't feel like there's anything that you did. Particularly, this is just the way the events played themselves out. And it was... Not in any of your hands. It was in the hands of God in divine timing. So that's the message that we got from the wisdom of the Oracle deck. And I think we're going to get one more and call it a night, right? Because I got to get to my client. And this is the daily guidance from your angels, Oracle cards by Doreen Virtue. All right. One more, one card for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is the message? Can we give them some encouragement, some affirmation, some guidance in regards to the time period between now and the end of, oh, wedding. <laughs> Marriage is a union of two souls joined in love, mutual respect, and commitment. It signifies a desire to deepen love over time. Your wedding day is a testament to your well-founded faith in love's power. Continually breathe life into that faith and love, dearest one. So for those of you that this resonated with, this could be talking about maybe after all of this, you will be getting married. This could also be talking about the importance of keeping life and love going within the marriage, which could have been a message for all these parties, okay? Because you have to work on a relationship. You just can't take it for granted. You just can't say, okay, well, we went to church and we had the good party or we went to the justice of the peace and whatever, and then don't continue to work on the relationship. Don't continue to find little ways to, to uh, encourage your partner or encourage yourselves, taking time out to rest, spending time. You can't give room for someone else to get into your relationship. Whether it be at work, church, school, whatever, neighbor, a person can only, nobody is, is like kidnapping your partner. They're going because they want to go or they were entertaining it because they were open to it. Because why? Some people, yeah, you could say they're sex addicts and things like that. That's a good rationale to put it all off of you and put it on them but so he's a sex addict so did you work on it did you try to get him help did you stop having sex with him and then wouldn't that just exasperate the situation if you know that he's addicted to sex did you use the sex when you wanted to use it 
and then deny it to them when you weren't interested or when it wasn't profiting you. People use sex as a weapon, especially if they know that that is a person's weak spot. Take advantage of it. it. Takes two to ruin a relationship. Two. So there's no sense in blaming it on the third party because this marriage is between two people. The person on the outside doesn't have any obligation to the spouse of the person. They really don't because they didn't make any promises to the spouse. That was the two promises these two people made to each other. And like I said, no one's going, no one is, is kidnapping anybody if they had their bags packed already. And you can't blame it on the woman when the woman didn't have anything. Y'all don't have relationships. They don't know you. They don't owe you anything. The person that owes you something is the spouse. And if you know that you haven't been perfect, that you have slipped up yourself, you can't, don't, don't play the victim and try to make it sound like, or make it look like you didn't have anything to do with this, that you were perfect and this wonderful and all oh, this horrible husband or wife that you have. You know better than that. They know better than that. And if they're not putting your stuff out on the um, Broadway and they're not blowing you up in front of everybody, it's because they have more respect for you than you have for them. They also have more respect for themselves. And this shows you that they really didn't want this but this is something, this is something that just occurred, but they still haven't trying to not add anything more to the mix, not make it any worse. Because if they told your truth, or if they told the truth about everything that happened, you might not be able to appear as such a sympathetic character. So... Everybody in all these situations need to check themselves. Yes, yes, yes. The person who is involved in a third party relationship and they know the person is married, of course, they should not entertain it. But again, they if they're not the person approaching, even if they are the person approaching, the obligation to remain faithful is not on the single person. It's on the person that's married. Even if they approach them. Right? Because the person that's married is the one that knows that they're not supposed to be doing that. The single person is not supposed to be the police and a monitor, a relationship monitor. They don't want know what's going on. And probably don't care. All right? So the relationship between the husband and wife is what is central and monumental. When that breaks down, then anything can break down around it. And you can't blame a third party because these people didn't take care of their business. Just having a big girl conversation. I'm sorry if people don't agree. I don't mean to trigger anybody, but somebody needed that. Somebody needed to hear that, that there's another, there's other ways to look at it, you know? And again, it's not the fault of the third party is the fault of one or both of the people involved in the main relationship, the marriage itself. Now, if you're not married, and but you're in a committed relationship, it's the same idea, but it's less because you're not married. You don't have any papers, all right? But still, it hurts when you feel like you've been betrayed. But again, you need to find out what, take responsibility for your part in the situation, but all three parties, but don't try to pile up all of the guilt on the third party and the cheating spouse and not 
take any responsibility yourself or excuse your behavior because they made you do it. No, they didn't make you do it. This is how you came in and maybe you didn't address issues that you needed to address yourself that had nothing to do with the, the marriage, had something to do with life, you know, things that may have happened to you before you even met this person. And then, you know, you think you're going to get married and miraculously this person is going to solve all your problems. No, that's not what they're there for. They're there to encourage you. They're there to uh, support you and love you, but they're not there to fix you. They can just support you while you're working on your own issues. But they can't fix it if you don't tell them what the issue is or that you even have a problem. Or if you're not open to getting the help when you get it, when, when you recognize it or when they recognize it. In other words, like if you go to marriage counseling and that kind of stuff, hmm, if you don't address it during counseling and you try to make it all on your partner, you're not going to get anywhere. Everybody has a part to play. Everybody has some guilt. So anyway, anyway, Scorpio, this is longer than I expected it to be or you expected it to be. And I want to thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of, the, of December and your holiday season. Happy holidays. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, please comment because uh, YouTube is doing something with the analytics and it's now going to be based on the comments that you get. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you'll know when these um, videos are uploaded. And I'll be talking to you all real soon. Thank you so much for sticking in there with me, hanging in there with me. I appreciate it so much. If you get someone, a friend to subscribe to, the ch to this channel, send me an email to pbtarot7 at gmail.com. Let me know the name of the new subscriber and you, and I will be giving out free readings when we get to 3,000 subscribers, right? So, and we're at like 22688, I think. So, it should be coming up real soon. Very good. Well, it was more than that, but um, YouTube decided to go through and get rid of some spam. So, that took people out also. I don't know what they're doing, but all I know is they've changed, they changed, they changed the rules around. So please like, subscribe, share, make a comment. It could just say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, whatever. You could say it resonated, it didn't. You could say hi, you could leave an emoji or a, uh, whatever you call it. And that'll count as a comment right now until they change the rules one more time. But thank you all so much for hanging in there with me. I love all you guys. And I hope this resonated with someone of you and that it was helpful to someone. Okay, write me an email, make comments. And I'll be more than happy to do a reading for you, okay? So be well and enjoy the new year. And I will speak to you all real soon. Hashe, namaste, and peace.